God can do anything. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let this thing you have said to, to me happen. Then the angel went away. Come on. Come on. Now we're going to sing a carol which is connected with that called the angel Gabriel. Now this time though we're going to pass out some little tea lights. Can we be passing them out now? Gabriel from heaven came, his wings as drifted snow, his eyes as flame. All hail, said he, the lowly maiden Mary, most highly favored lady, Gloria. For no one blessed mother thou. Generations, Lord, and honor thee. Thy son shall be Emmanuel, thy sins foretold. Most highly favored lady, Gloria. Then gentle Mary meekly bowed her head to me be as it pleases God. My soul shall lord and magnify his holy name, most highly favored lady, Gloria. Of her Emmanuel the Christ was born, in Bethlehem of all the Christmas morn, and Christian folk throughout the world. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town to Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them.
Luke 2 verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. This will find... Sorry, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning that, concerning what had been told them, what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The shepherds went to Bethlehem, and we're all going to Bethlehem now. And our next carol, Bethlehem, 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 oh, we're going to Bethlehem. We're going to Bethlehem. We're going to Bethlehem. We go Bethlehem. In just one night, the world was changed. This town has God arranged the virgin had a baby boy. He came so we could share his joy. Oh, Bethlehem, we're going to Bethlehem. We're going to Bethlehem. Oh, Bethlehem, we're going to Bethlehem. We're sitting Bethlehem. We're going to Bethlehem. Oh, Bethlehem. The angel came. Shepherd saw the glory bright. He brought good news. He brought great joy that Satan's power can never destroy. Oh, Bethlehem, we're going to Bethlehem. We're going to Bethlehem. We're going to Bethlehem. Oh, Bethlehem, we're singing Bethlehem. We're going to Bethlehem. We're singing Bethlehem. Oh, Bethlehem. Glory be to God above, who sent his Son to show his love. And honor, peace be to all men, all praise to him in the highest heaven. Oh, Bethlehem, we're going to Bethlehem, we're singing Bethlehem. Oh, Bethlehem, we're going to Bethlehem, we're going to Bethlehem, we're singing Bethlehem. Oh, Jerusalem, called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. 
He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Supreme Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. One rule, don't ask me to hold the baby. You know, I always dread it when somebody new in the office has a where it turns to me, they come back with the baby and they're sort of walking around. I think, just don't bring the baby near me. I won't bring it near me, don't ask me to hold it. But you know, I, I had three. Well, I didn't have three. My wife had three babies. <laughs> Get these things right. Get these things right. But you know, the, the hardest thing I remember about having babies was naming them. We never found that very easy. There was always a bit of a debate about the naming thing. And to this day, I believe my daughter is not happy with the process. <laughs> she feels her name should be, I think, Chiara or something like that, which apparently I overruled. I think Charlotte's a perfectly good name. But, you know, um, you know it's good to like your name. Yeah. I don't know. I think Jesus, I hope Jesus likes his name. He also went by some other names, or at least the scriptures talk about other names that referred to Jesus. Ben allu- um, Sharia alluded to one of those earlier when she read out of Matthew. It talked about Emmanuel, God with us. I like that. God with us. And I thought, you know, I was thinking about that. I think I'd, I'd take to looking up where that came from. And it comes from a, a, um, a narrative in the Old Testament. The prophet Isaiah was sent to a guy called King Ahaz in Isaiah chapter 7, if you want to check it out. He was sent to King Ahaz, and King Ahaz was under threat from two kings nearby, on it, neighboring him. They wanted him to join them so they could resist together the king of Assyria. Ahaz thought he'd rather make a deal with the king of Assyria. That was his plan. But God sent Isaiah to Ahaz and said, you know, don't worry about it. These two kings will not be able to overthrow you. Just trust in me. Ahaz, and I can appreciate this, was a little bit nervous about this just trust in me business. And so he didn't really want to do that. God said, ask me for a sign. And Ahaz said, no, I'm not going to ask you for a sign. Maybe he'd heard later on Jesus was going to refuse to test God. He said, I'm not going to test you in that way. And, he, you know, and because of that, God said, well, I'm going to give you a sign anyway. That's what he said. He says, you know, he says, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him. Emmanuel, God with us. And that's how, that's how that name, God with us, came about. Because <coughs> Ahaz didn't want to trust God. You know, it's instinctive, I think, sometimes. You know, we start out in life fairly trusting. When you're a baby, you're helpless. You trust whoever picks you up. You have very little choice. But as you get older, that trust starts to erode. People let you down. I had a plumber around recently to fix my tap. He made it worse. I said to Karen, that I phoned her up after he'd gone, he's made it worse. She said, get him back. I said, I'm not getting back. I don't trust him. You know, and you start to lose your trust. 
You know, why should we trust God? Sometimes in life, things go wrong. You think, why should I trust God? You know, the story or the narrative around the coming of Jesus is that, is that really God came to be with us through Jesus. Not just with us in the sense of looking after us, but so that physically we could see who God was through Jesus. The story of this narrative around Christmas is not just about a birth. It's the beginning of a life. A life to be led that will transform the way the world understands God. You know, and that's really the beauty of the Christmas narrative. It helps us to see God came to earth. Interesting enough, you know, Jesus lived for maybe 30 or so years, then he made the ultimate sacrifice. He went to the cross. But after he went to his cross, he rose from the dead. And right at the end, he said, you know, in Matthew chapter 28, it says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you. Always to the very end of the age. Right at the beginning the message was, God is with us. At the end, eternity, God is with you always. To the very end of the age. You know, we take communion now just to remember that Jesus came to transform our image of God. To make us so that we could trust him, no matter what happens in our life. And to know that ultimately, as long as we commit our lives to him, he will be with us always to the very end of the age. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, thank you so much so we can get together, God, to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Thank you that we can remember, Lord, that just like any other baby, he was helpless. And yet you had an incredible plan for his life. A life that would transform the world and the way that it understood you. Help us to trust you, God, with everything in our lives. Regardless of how our lives sometimes go, we know that you have a great plan for us all. And eternity lies ahead of us. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, sacrifice on the cross. Thank you for the, the bread and the wine we can, we can take now to remember his body and his blood sacrificed for us. We thank you for his love. We pray in your son's name. Amen. God bless thee, Mary, gentlemen,
January we have a uh, um, <coughs> a church service in the university as on the sheet and Shiv, who would you make? Okay, and on the 6th of January Tim will be preaching yeah. 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 Suite in Reading University and there is actually a very special visitor here today to see some of the children He's, wear, he's wearing a red and white outfit. And he's, he, really, he really wants to see any child who, or young person who is a preteen. So, preteen. So, 12. If you're in the preteen class and you're 13, that's great too. You can go and visit him. Um, and anybody younger than that. So, he's ready to meet you at the very end. So, we're going to have one more reading and one more song. And, and then he's going to be at the far end here on the right in the room on the left. So, I'll be there anyway. So, if you see me, you'll know you're in the right place. Okay. And a very happy Christmas. <clears throat> We've got a sort of a bittersweet um, announcement to make. Um, as you all know that we've got a very special family that's departing soon for the US and it's in most likely going to be their last service with us all here in the foreseeable future. They're planning to, to depart early in January, so we're not too sure. I know myself, my family, we, we wouldn't have returned yet back from holiday, so we certainly won't see them on the service uh, again before they leave. If I can ask Pietro, Carmen and Carl oh. to... To come to the front, please. Here's a, here's a little small something from, from us. My, my darling wife, who obviously been absolutely thrilled to be here for this moment. She's in South Africa at the moment, but on behalf of her uh, and the rest of the church, we just want to say... Um, it's been amazing, you know, just being in your lives, and you know, we our two families have, you know, lived for a few years together, almost as, as real blood family, and uh, we can't say enough how much we will miss you, and thank you so much for what you mean to the rest of the congregation and what you've contributed, and um, you know, everybody's going to miss you tremendously, and uh, we love you guys so much. Um, we've got a I've got a card, and in the card, I just. Just sort of, what will I say? And I think, you know, this is an amazing adventure that, that God, you know, that you're embarking on. And I think we should see that wherever we go, if we go with God, you know, things will go well. But what, I've also, what I also think is that to remember that God is the real adventure. He gives us the real adventure. Our lives can only be successful um, if we are close to Him, if He's the center. And then no matter what we do, we will have true success. Not the success that the world offers, where there's, you know, there's so much that, the, that we think the world offers, but it means nothing compared to what God gives us. And I know that you guys love God, you love His family, and I know wherever you go, you will be, you know, you will be in the center, and you will be involved with His church and His family, and, and God will bless that. And so, with a heavy heart, we, we send you off. 
to the, the big unknown. Um, for you, it's a little less unknown, I hope, by now. You've had a few scouting trips. But uh, we just want to say from the bottom of our hearts, we love you, appreciate you, we will miss you tremendously, and uh, we hope to see you in, every now and then still. We're going to arrange visits and have our, you know, our family trips together, I hope. Uh, and the rest of you, please don't forget our lovely family. Uh, Carl, Pietro, and and and, uh, and, Piet and, and Carl, please, you know, let's stay in touch. And I'm sure you, you know, you will you will send out the contact details uh, in due time, as they are known. So, uh, you know, let's let him just bow, bow ahead, and, and I'll just pray for us. Um, Father, thank you so much that we had the the, the privilege, the benefit of, of having Carl, Pietro, and Carmen with us um, as our brothers and sisters. Uh, and I, I pray, Lord, that, that you bless them as they go from here to, to Texas, where they're going to be part of the, of the Austin Church, um, and where they're going to continue just their walk with you. Uh, and now with a, with a new part of our, or different part of our family, um, but we, but we just pray, God, that they will, that they will be fed and nurtured uh, over there, and that they will grow spiritually, they grow stronger, they will, they will grow closer and closer to you, that, that they walk with you would would benefit from this move. Um, it's, it's unknown, it's unsure. We, we don't know what lies on the other side of, of such a big um, transition. But God, with you, everything is secure. God. And I pray, as Tony also mentioned in his, in his message, that, that, you, that, that we will put our trust fully in you, no matter what, whether it's going well or it's going, going poorly, that, uh, with, you know, um, that, that we will always have our eyes on you. And I pray that, that you bless this wonderful family. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's amazing. As we say farewell to some of our friends, we welcome another one to our family. Just today, can I have Elijah up front, please? No, we know as, as Christmas holidays is coming by, we start to wind down because we want that rest. But we know God doesn't rest in His work. And today, Elijah was, was baptized to be part of his To show your love, his family's back there. We have a new brother in our family. Congratulations, Elijah. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent with God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
Thank you.